Good morning. Can you guys hear me? Yep. I want to thank you all for uh, skipping the you know opening of the expo floor and coming here instead and listening to us. I've been asked to um, tell everybody to silence their phones so that we don't get any calls. My name is Hoken Stranda, and I'm here with my colleague Noel Cross uh, to talk about a physics-based approach to acoustics in game design. We have a lot of information to go through, so I'll just get started. Um, as you know, in game, uh, games, game development, we use physics in a number of ways to create game experiences. We use it for automated landscape creation, lighting, uh, rigid body dynamics. Taking lighting as an example, to build immersive environments, modeling light is used to create glossiness, surface roughness, reflectivity, scattering, and a bunch of other things that I'm not an expert in. Um, at the same time, for acoustics and sound, we use approximations and tricks and workarounds to create the acoustics of our game worlds. Uh, sound waves are you know, infinitely more complex to simulate than, than light rays, and which that makes it, may explain some of the deltas. Um, so today, we'd like to introduce a system that allows game sound design to take advantage of wave physics in order to immerse the player uh, in games where the acoustics match the realism, accuracy, and designability of physics-based light. We'll explore the building blocks of game world acoustics, what we mean by that, and how project acoustics can help create immersive environments faster, accurately representing sound wave behavior in virtual worlds with, with deep and powerful design controls. So first I want to play a, a short 60-second um, video snippet. It's illustrating some of the challenges we face when creating game world acoustics. And um, I ask you to listen to what happens to the sound source as the player moves around in this, in this cave. Uh, and consider what it may take to get the same sort of seamless experience using other available methods that we are familiar with today. That cave um, certainly is a geometrically complicated environment. It's full of outcroppings, uneven walls, tunnels, cavities, openings of all sizes and shapes. And when we combine that challenging environments with what we know about how real sound waves behave, uh, they would reflect, diffract, scatter, and absorb, it won't be easy to approximate uh, what this complex space should do to, to the sounds in it. But we have project acoustics now, and we don't need to approximate any longer. Um, the acoustics you heard here were created with that system. Uh, no zones, no rays, no code, just sound waves. And we'll go through what that means. Uh, I want to dig into the sort of the core technology that the, the system provides you. Here is a visualization of how uh, real sound waves from one sound source propagate through this top-down view of a virtual environment. Uh, I wanted to notice that uh, when, when sound waves behave like in the real world, they, they perform a really uh, fantastically complicated dance, uh, even in a simple scene like this. Uh, each single wave simulation, repeated for all possible sound source and player locations, allow us to extract acoustic parameters that are in turn used to process the sound sources in your game. In essence, project acoustics use the cloud to translate the huge amount of impulse responses, which can be terabytes in this case, uh, from, the wave, from the wave physics simulation into acoustic, perceptually relevant parameters at a tiny fraction of the size. 
These parameters, in turn, then allow the deep designer controls of the wave physics simulation. The project acoustics uh, provides uh, believable acoustics, uh, without tricks and without complex code. Uh, there's no approximations or CPU-hungry workarounds. And we'll get into the details. Before we do that, I want to talk about what acoustics um, the system automatically gives you uh, and how it does that. So let's talk about some of the effects that create acoustics. We have obstruction, which means that sound is weakened and the perceived direction changes with how the waves diffract around the obstruction. We have portaling. That means the sound arrives around doorways, through doorways, and that provides better spatial cues for the player than if it, the sound was coming through the wall. And this can be really tough to approximate using traditional methods. And we have occlusion. This means the total reduction in loudness from the scene to geometry. Uh, it means that sound reaches the listener via complex reflected and diffracted waves. And these play a crucial role in player perception. And here's an example of reverberance. Uh, the direct path is obstructed in the second room over here and making the dry sound weaker while the reverberation is equally strong. And this helps with the perception of, of distance. Then you have decay time, which is a familiar concept to most of us. Um, it means that sound reverberate longer in larger rooms. As you can see here, the reverberations die out in the, in the smaller room. It's obvious, but with traditional methods, this, this approach is really time consuming to get to set up for all the different uh, environments and rooms and spaces in a virtual world. OK, so what does Project Acoustics offer? Uh, we're going to spend 30 minutes from now, and, and we have divided it up into sort of three different sections. Uh, first, we'll show you the ways that system can help you create and render the acoustics faster, mainly by integrating the acoustics uh, into the workflow of the scene design, and by using the cloud to bake, to, to create these uh, acoustic parameters. And then we'll discuss how the, the runtime can be more CPU and RAM friendly in that case. The second section is about accuracy. Um, we'll talk about how using real wave physics can generate the DSP parameters that determine how the geometry and the materials of your scene affects the sounds that you place in it. And the third and the most important section is about design. And we'll talk about how you can bend physics to your will for acoustics, sort of in principle like you can do for rigid body dynamics and lighting in other aspects of game development. Okay, let's first talk about speed. Project acoustics integrate into the Unity and Unreal scene design workflow. Creating the sound of the environment does not longer, no longer have to be a separate sort of disconnected step. The scene design integration basically is tagging of the geometry of the, and the materials of the scene. Um, in some cases, you can just use the system to automatically apply the materials from your uh, mesh names to the metadata. And in other cases, you can go in and, and, and change those things yourself. So you have full control of geometry and materials. Uh, the system then wraps the geometry in what we call voxels. And in the video that I played earlier, you saw a glimpse of the sort of the green blanket of, of cubes that were, that were sort of covering the cave. Those are the voxels that we're using in the system. I'll get back to those a little bit later. Um, now, these voxels determine where the simulation of the sound waves will interact with the scene geometry. It sends that information off to the cloud for simulation and extraction of the acoustic parameters. And this is done for each of the scenes, thousands of potential sound source and listener posi posi uh, position pairs. So when designing a virtual environments, uh, traditional reverb zone placement and parameter tweaking uh, obviously, it can be time consuming and even sometimes tedious, uh, involving manual and code based simplifications of acoustics. Now, here's a couple of screenshots from a, um, a social VR game called Alt Space. Uh, and the Alt Space sound designers were looking for a way to get out of this, uh, this constant changing of zones, mod modification, manipulation of zones, and, and tweaking the parameters manually to get the sound that they wanted. They wanted to spend their time on creative sound design instead of the, the moving the zones and manually tweaking reverb parameters. Now, it's important to realize that when you, move, when you leave zones behind, you save time, obviously, but also the traditional approaches to acoustics 
um, do not ensure the complete spatial consistency during sound source and player movements across the entire virtual scene or world. But the solution that we're presenting today does. Let's talk about runtime and gameplay impact. Here's a scene with 50 active sound sources. Uh, note that each call to the acoustic parameters that we have created takes microseconds in the teens. Uh, and don't forget to divide by 50 on that, on that number. Um, and um, the perceptual parameters in RAM for this scene is about 5 megabytes above a 20 megabyte fixed cost. And the memory cost for the, the metadata can be reduced further through streaming only the parameter metadata that's relevant to the listener position as the listener moves through the, through the world. And now I want to hand off to Noel to give a, do a demo of the speed aspects of Project Acoustics. Thank you, Hogan. Hi, my name's Noel Cross, and I'm really excited to show this uh, workflow, how fast and easy as it can be for you. Um, we're unveiling a new Unreal workflow uh, that is uh, hot off the presses. And we've had a Unity workflow before, but I'm really excited to show this Unreal workflow. Um, so what you'll see on the screen right now is some sample content that we pulled from the Unreal portal. It is the Sun Temple sample project. And we've incorporated the acoustic system into this Sun Temple project. Um, we've also preloaded the editor plugin as well as the runtime plugin for Project Acoustics into this particular sample. So what I want to do is walk through this workflow. And uh, first of all, th uh, the first thing you do, is, as Hoken described, is you go to the Project Acoustics um, icon here. You can see it. It's a kind of a neat little 3D ball. That's our logo. And uh, that's where you interact with the Project Acoustics workflow. And the first step is uh, really starting to tag your geometry with, uh, with some tags that, that signify that you want the acoustic simulation to interact with the, geometry, the geometric elements of this scene. So in this scene, we've pre-tagged all of these uh, geometric elements. And what I'm going to do is, is click on this Select Tagged button. And we can look around here, and we can see how almost everything is selected. Um, you know, the windows and the geometry and everything in the scene is all, all marked up. Um, I can show you down the hallway. There's even more geometry that's marked up here. Okay, with our geometry tagged, um, the next thing that's important as far as the uh, wave acoustic simulation is to make sure that you have a navigation mesh selected. Um, the navigation mesh is really important, and there's two ways to uh, specify the navigation mesh. One way is you can, you can highlight the geometry that you want to specifically tag for navigation. And the other way is you can integrate into the Unreal workflow and generate a navigation mesh uh, like you would do for a game level. Um, in this particular scene, we've uh, created a navigation mesh using Unreal. And you can see this yellowish, greenish uh, geometry is, uh, signifies the navigation mesh, and it's Throughout my entire scene, this is where the player can be. Now, the important part of the, about the navigation mesh whoops, um, is that for the acoustic simulation, we want to cut out unnecessary calculations. Because the listener, i.e., the player, can only be in certain locations in this particular scene, uh, we can avoid calculations for areas where the listener cannot be. So um, it's really nice to select the navigation to cut down on unnecessary, unnecessary calculations, as well as the file size that contains all the acoustic parameters is, is much reduced when you specify a navigation mesh. So um, now that I have the geometry selected and I have the navigation mesh selected, I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to go to the next step, which is the material selection process. And so. Every single piece of geometry that we have tagged, we will automatically extract the materials from that geometry. Um, and you can see that this list is uh, occupied with several different materials. And it scroll, you know, I can scroll down and see all the materials that were automatically extracted. And what you'll notice is that we have a lookup table that matches material names with absorption values. And those absorption values are important for the acoustic simulation as well. Um, and you'll see these numbers signify the absorption ratio for each of these materials. Now, 
I notice in this particular scene there's a few materials that were not uh, identified precisely. So like this particular one, um, if I click on it, I can see the elements in the, in the object explorer that uh, are, have this particular material. And I can say, oh, well, default isn't good enough for me, so I want to go set it to uh, some other value. So I can uh, set it to 0.2 and, uh, and to override uh, the, the default value that was given for that particular material. Now that I have the materials all selected, I basically, I get to go start doing the simulation uh, of, of the wave acoustic system. So let's move on to the probes uh, tab. And here you have a couple different uh, options and, and the, the main option that you wanna worry about is the simulation resolution. And so we have two different options here. One is coarse and the other one is fine. And right now I have it set to coarse. And coarse is really good for when you're building your title and you want to do proofs of the acoustic simulation, you want to have quick turnaround time and uh, you don't want to uh, pay the price for larger bakes or larger time to, to bake the, uh, the scene. So course, course is really good for, for you know, kind of pre-production, I would say. Fine would be good for when you're getting close to shipping your title, you'd want to switch to fine and have a more accurate uh, simulation. But for, for now, I'm just going to choose course. And so I'll click, click Calculate, and what's going to happen here is with all that tag geometry, with the navigation mesh and the materials, um, what will happen is we, we calculate optimal probe point positions, and these probe point positions are representations of where the listener can be in the scene. And uh, it is where, as Hoken showed in, in a previous slide, where the wave physics simulation uh, is seeded from. And so you can see these these blue boxes are where the probe point locations are in this course um, uh, simulation. And also you can see the voxels. The voxels was the reduction of the geometry into basically simplification of the geometry for the wave physics simulation. So we're done here. Um, and the last step um, is where we go and send this uh, set of geometry and acoustic parameters to the cloud to get baked uh, in Azure. And so um, I have my credentials entered here. Um, it's all pre-populated with, with my credentials. And then I can select the machine types that I wanna run the simulation against and the number of machines that I wanna dedicate to the simulation. The nice thing about when, when we're talking about fast, we can, because the simulation is highly parallelized, we can send the simulation to multiple machines at the same time and it'll reduce the amount of time that it takes to actually get the result back from Azure. So I'm not gonna click the bake button now because I already have the pre-rendered result, but uh, that's all I have for how fast it is. So I know, no raise, no reverb zones. We got to the point where we can have an asset that we ship with our title in very few minutes, and, uh, and hopefully you'll be happy with the result. Thanks. And back Thanks to Hogan. Switch back. Okay. So um, next we'll talk about, um, and here, uh, you know, this, this room isn't ideal for listening. Uh, if you want to do critical listening, you come to our, our demo station um, at the uh, Microsoft booth. But we'll hear also how wave physics provide an accurate representation of the virtual environment and how it affects the sounds in it. Later we'll get to the design aspects. So how do we get from terabytes of complex wave physics simulations in the cloud for each possible sound and player location pair uh, to just a few megabytes of perceptual parameters, in, per, perceptual parameters in console RAM. Well, the magic is in the transformation from impulse responses to metadata. For a fixed listener position, we encode a 3D field of these initial directions, meaning for each potential sound location, we draw the direction of the initial sound toward the player. As the sound source and player moves around in the, in the world, the field changes and, and we separately simulate and encode and store those changes. Then for every frame, the relevant field parameters uh, are applied. Now this is how the system automatically provides accurate obstruction, occlusion, portaling, and reverberation for game sources fluidly as the player moves through the game. I want to show you uh, sort of the, um, a visual that gives you an idea of the enormous scope of the wave physics simulation. 
that the project acoustics gives access to. So here um, is a, a visualization of the sound source point cloud, which are these orange emitters. Um, and, the, uh, and these are all relevant to that single light blue cube, which is the, the one of the player positions. Um, now, each of these sound sources interact with each of the voxels that we've seen uh, earlier. And, and then when you multiply that with the number of potential player locations, you get an idea of the accuracy that the sound designer enjoys with this system. And, and given that workload, uh, it's, it's good that we have the cloud and parallel computing like Noel talked about to sort of offload um, this stuff. Do they have a lifting? OK, so Noel, you ready for another demo? Yes. All right, so I am going to demonstrate how accurate this particular simulation is. Um, first of all, I want to preface this with, uh, it, it may be hard to hear the effects of this particular simulation in this hall. Um, each hall is different, it has different reverberation qualities. So I highly encourage you to come to station number two in the Microsoft booth to uh, take a listen for yourself um, in a better listening environment. So, but we'll try it in here and see how it goes. So first I'm gonna, Start this scene and. In the real world, humans use audiovisual. So, first, I want to show how accurate this is. Um, the, I'm not, we're not going to listen to it first, but we're just going to see how, with a fine bake, we've got voxels that are wrapping around the entire geometry of the scene. And you can see how, if I look up, say, this statue up here, look how these wings are wrapped with vo uh, voxels. So sound will interact with every aspect of this particular statue, which is pretty cool. Um, also, you can see all these, uh, these blue boxes. And these blue boxes are where the listener positions are. Um, and we do interpolate between each of these different listener positions. So um, you will get an accurate uh, representation of how the, the scene sounds with respect to all these listener positions. But you can see them scattered throughout this scene. Uh, and we put probe positions in, in interesting acoustic locations. So if there's a place where probes are, are, or positions are fairly uniform as far as acoustics are concerned, we may drop a probe out because it's not as interesting acoustically. But when you have small corridors, we may put more probes in there because uh, there's more dynamics in those conditions and we want to have a better sampling for those areas. So I am going to turn the voxels off, even though they're very pretty. Um, and then we're going to start listening for the first time to the fruits of our labor. Um, what I want to do is illustrate the, the power of occlusion and obstruction. And so we have a wall right here. And we're going to use that wall to our, our advantage to listen to how objects, uh, sound objects get uh, obstructed and occluded uh, around the scene. So. Right, the next thing I want to show is the power of portaling. It's another powerful feature of the system. And I'm going to... I have to listen to it for a second. Here we go. All right, so there is another object in this scene. And it's pretty far away, and we're going to go try to find it. And the nice thing about this is there's this... See this handy arrow that's kind of coming away from my body? Well, that arrow is the arrival direction of the sound source. And you can see how the arrival direction is moving around while I'm moving the player. Anyway, so this, uh, this particular arrow was showing the arrival direction. And it's, it's quite a useful piece of information for panners and spatializers to give the user a sense of where the sound is coming from. It helps uh, immerse the player into the scene. It gives them accurate representation of, of where the sound is actually coming from. That's all I have for this part of the demo, and uh, I'll throw it back to Hogan. Thank you, Noel. OK. So we're bouncing back again. Yep. OK, let's talk about design. Um, I once again want to repeat that we have a demo station at the Microsoft booth, and you can do critical listening on headphones there for, for those who want to do that. So we have seen how we get to a, a fully sort of realized acoustic experience by leveraging how sound waves propagate and uh, interacts with the materials of the, of the scene, of the geometry in the scene. And now that we have the perceptual parameters loaded into RAM, 
and the cloud has done its job. It's, it's out of the picture. Uh, we can tweak and mess with the acoustic realism just like uh, level designers can do changing the lighting model or the, uh, to do artistic light scattering and reflectivity effects and things like that. But it's important to realize that if we did nothing, nothing more to this result that we've done, we already have an acoustic experience for the game that uh, we can use because the waves, the sound waves, represent how sound waves would actually uh, uh, propagate in the space, uh, in reality. Um, but because reality can be boring or too real, obviously we want designers to have the controls um, that we're gonna go into. But I wanted to first just recap how the system works, sort of the steps. Uh, we talked about how you uh, mark up your geometry and make sure materials are the right thing uh, to, for each geometry, uh, ge geometrical object. Um, and um, we have touched on, there are three major steps. So you have the scene data and bake prep, you have the baking, and then you have the rendering. Um, and the, in the rendering aspect, that's where you, you have designer controls that allow you to control the, the sound of each of the sound sources in your game. Now, from the baking, from the wave physics simulation, you get these uh, five parameters. There are arrival direction, dry path attenuation, wet level, decay time, and what we call outdoorness, which maybe we'll see in the dictionary one day, I don't know. Um, and from these perceptual parameters, we derive design controls that are, that are representing aspects of environment acoustics that are more familiar to, to us. And that's these controls in green. And uh, they allow you to manipulate sort of the laws of physics after the cloud has created the, the foundation for the game world's acoustics. And uh, they're represented in the Unreal Editor this way. And they're also represented in our Unity plugin also in similar ways. And uh, Noel's gonna give us a, a, a test of how those works in, in in, in real time on an Xbox. All right, now I get to have some fun. We've switched over to the Xbox. This is the sample scene that we've been, uh, I've been showing in the editor, and now we are on an Xbox, and we will play with these design controls. These design controls we think are a powerful new uh, tool for sound designers to use. Um, why? Should we have these design controls? Well, you know, in my opinion, reality is kind of boring in, in some sense. So we, we want to give the power to sound designers to be able to tweak these parameters in a way that is very CPU friendly and uh, provides the creative control over the, the sonic experience that you want to have. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I've got a secret menu here that shows all these design controls. and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it to the extremes of each of these controls so you can get an idea of what these uh, design controls actually do for you. Um, let's see, so... Next, let's move on to wetness. The physics of this room is pretty boomy. Dropping the wetness value will make an object sound like it is in a dull room. The decay time control will allow you to adjust how long it takes for the reverb to fade out. Set this value to zero, you'll get a really snappy reverb. This one is a little more subtle. Bumping the outdoorness all the way up will give the impression that the sound is more outside than it really is. 
This is done by using filters that are much drier than the indoor responses. Lastly, let's play with transmission. This value can be used to control how much of the direct sound penetrates through barriers. Bump up this value to make the walls disappear. That's all I have. Thank you, Noel. Now back to Hogan. Okay. Brilliant. Okay, so just to summarize, uh, Project Acoustic leverages proven technology uh, that we've used in several Microsoft products and in AAA games uh, like uh, Gears of War and, and Sea of Thieves. And um, the technology now is available to, to everyone. Uh, we have two major prepackaged solutions, one for the Unity editor with the Unity audio engine, and one for the Unreal editor using the WISE audio engine for rendering. Uh, we're happy to discuss bespoke engine support, if that's interesting. Uh, again, we're at the Microsoft booth, the demonstration number two. Um, the runtime currently supports Android and Windows and Xbox uh, with additional platforms on the horizon through middleware. Uh, and the plugins are freely available for download and use in the design and distribution of your titles. Uh, to generate the acoustic data for your game geometry, uh, the Wave Physics simulation is using a Microsoft Azure subscription. And uh, this is our last slide. Uh, I hope this gave you a taste of what Wave Physics uh, and how pro is and, and, and how Project Acoustics works and maybe what this cap capability can do for you in, in your games. Um, and if this session resonated with you, pun intended, uh, please consider getting a demo at our, our demo station. Uh, we're also repeating this session, a shorter version of this session, at various times during the, the show, both in the Microsoft booth and uh, at the Audio Kinetic booth and at the Dolby booth. And by that, I wanted to thank you guys for attending, and uh, we'll be happy to take questions. <laughs>